Hey, welcome back to another video guys. My name is Timon, this is Slider Drift. Today will be another DIY video. What I'm gonna do in this video is I'm replacing the solar panels. Um, the solar panels at the moment are 600 watts, but they're basically useless and they're not the right voltage. Um, my system voltage is, for the electric motor side, is 48 volts and obviously 12 and, and a little bit of 24 for the um, for the house side. Um, yeah, so what I wanna do is I've got two 400 watt sun power solar panels. Sun power, I think, is one of the best on the market. Considering I've got limited amount of space, I just wanted the best solar panels I possibly could put up there. What I'm also gonna do is upgrade my wind generator. I've got a silent wind generator and it is a 1224 volt wind generator. And I'm just gonna upgrade that to 48 volts and also give it a makeover. It's looking pretty, uh, uh, pretty worn and pretty weathered. So give it a little facelift, make it talk 48 volts. My solar panels will talk 48 volts. And then I should have a juicy charging system going on. Um, Yeah, today we learn. I kick things off by disconnecting the old wind generator, disassembling it and taping up the lead so they couldn't go anywhere. I then bash out the old bearings, which totaled them because they were seized in place, and then remove the tiny little control panel and the brushes. I tried to remove the stator from the face. I thought it was rusted in there, but it turns out that it's not supposed to come out. <laughs> With a few different bits and pieces, I grind down all the old crummy paint back to bare metal. Dremel tool works well on these tiny little uh, crevices that I can't get to with the other bits and pieces. So, uh, it's the first time I've used one, sort of sounds like a, uh, a dentist drill. I wonder if they just use a Dremel. That worked quite nicely on those. Go the Dremel. I taped up what I could and cleaned all the bits with acetone, ready for their new paint job. I gave all the bits a few coats of primer and then a few coats of the paint that I'd selected. That shaking sound of the spray can always makes me feel like a graffiti artist, but I'm not sure why. I did the same with the nose cone, but I just used the plastic primer instead of the metal primer that I was using for the rest of the wind generator. What I'm doing now is, this is inside the wind generator. I can't actually get this out. I've got the sir clip off here. Can't actually pull it out because it must be seized in there again, so I can't replace that bearing. It is only the bearing that is changing the direction of the wind generator. It is moving, but it's not as important as the uh, the bearings that I'm replacing for the, the blades going around. So what I've got is skateboard bearing lubricant. What I'm gonna do is clean all this up. It's quite sort of dirty in there. I'm gonna clean these three contacts up as well. Um, see if I can get it moving all nice and good. So they are looking so much better now. I might just run this. I ran 400 grit over it and now 600 grit. I might just run 600 grit over these um, bushes here. So I did do them with this little sandpaper bit for the Dremel, but I'm not sure what that was, but uh, 600 is the lowest grit, highest grit that I've got. And that'll be super smooth. Okay, I'd say that's all pretty good. I just need to put this little thingy back in there, whatever that does. Um, I wasn't actually sure, I'm hoping it doesn't matter, but I wasn't actually sure which way the brushes went, whether that was one, two, three, or that was one, two, three there. So, um, because there's nothing on there, I have a feeling it probably doesn't matter, but I just gotta hope. I sanded back the surface that the new bearings would sit right up against, and then it was time to install the new bearings. Now I'm just gonna clean this up a little bit and chuck her in. reinstall it back onto the head of the wind generator. So realistically, it wasn't super difficult. There were some pretty fiddly parts. These little screws on here, I had to sort of get my finger behind there at the same time and get it on. Um, but apart from that, everything was pretty good. 
Now that that is all done, so I've got two of these polished stainless steel elbows and what I wanna, well, I'll just, come on, I'll show you what I wanna do. There's a bit of wind noise in the next couple of clips, so I'll just do a voiceover. I've got these two 45 degree elbows and I'm gonna use that and cut the wind generator mast in two spots and have it essentially dog leg out off the back of the boat. I'm doing this for just one reason and that's to not have the wind generator towering over the solar panels and give the solar panels the maximum amount of sun every day that they could possibly get. If you knock out one cell of your solar panel, you can knock out the whole solar panel depending on the type of panel and where the shade is falling on with my electric motor and the rest of my boat being electric I need the power and so I want them solar panels to do their best I think I've got this all marked up it is Saturday on Monday I'm gonna take that into a welding shop in Brisbane and they're gonna weld it up for me also need him to do is weld these two 45 degree connectors and this little uh, saint I think Saint is an Australian brand. Little sort of like strut support. I'm not entirely sure whether I'll need the third one, but this is the third one. I don't think I will. But anyway, while, while whilst it's in there, I might as well just get him to weld that on. I removed the basically useless solar panels off the Bimini and then got my Boom Tings new solar panels and strapped them to the Bimini just so I could mark out where I needed to drill the holes. I drilled the holes where I could through the stainless steel and the bimini both so that the bolt would have a lot more to hold on to. <laughs> so there was a there's a heap of redundant wires up there. TV antenna, two GPSs for two old chart plotters, and antenna for like FM radio. <clears throat> so I've taken all those out. And the only wires that I still need up there are the solar wires and the three wires from the wind generator and I have just misjudged the hole and managed to drill a hole through all the wires that I actually need still. Things take such a long time anyways um, and then when you go make a stupid mistake oh man oh man oh man. I tied a little bit of Dyneema mouse line to the old wires then pulled the old wires through leaving the mouse line in place so I could pull the new wires back through the same way. I then connected two MC4 connectors onto the end of the wire so I can connect the wires to the solar panels. Because my uh, solar voltage is quite high, I didn't really need that thicker cable. And these MC4 connectors, they're actually really good, really simple to use. They're not quite making a good seal in there. Just before I connect them, I'm just gonna get a little bit of silicon in there and just dab it in there. And also heat shrink this on to uh, discourage any water. It's the toffin coming up the canal, what the? Time to remove the solar panels again, not for the last time. Okay, before I go ahead and attach these little feet to the solar panel, I'm going to coat whatever whatever aluminium touches the stainless steel in Tef Gel. Tef Gel is widely considered the industry standard for galvanic corrosion. If you've got two different metals touching each other, you need this stuff. I placed the solar panels back on top of the bimini, not for the last time, so I could measure out where to drill the holes for the remainder of the feet. These holes are just going through the bimini and not through any stainless steel. I used the drill fill drill method with some epoxy fairing compound that I had left over. I probably should have used some thickened epoxy and made that a little bit better, but I was a little bit lazy. Put the solar panels back on the bimini for the last time. Yay! And then fix it all down. Looks pretty neat. Just gonna connect these up in series. So these two solar panels are Maxion 3 solar panels. They weigh about 19 kilo, they're 400 watts each and they come in at something like 60 volts around about. So my system's 48 volts and I've got a Victron 48 volt charge controller. So I'm gonna wire these in series. Yeah, so positive to positive and negative to negative and maybe even get it hooked up today. Even though there's not much sun going on today. Hey, it's Christmas Eve. 
alcoholic lolly water. <laughs> this big party going on over there. It's raining. I highly doubt that the camera can pick that up, but that is sideways rain. A quick break and then was back onto the remainder of the solar wiring and connections. I'm in my little cubby again. So the order for this uh, Victron and PPT, it says um, turn all the loads off, connect the battery, turn loads on, connect the VE direct so the MPPT can talk with the Servo GX and display how much the solar is putting into the batteries on my on my touch screen and then connect solar array. It didn't say anything about not connecting under load which I'm a little bit worried about because it's coming in at sort of like 60 volts and so I'm going to give it a go. Ooh, I'm not sure. I think in my head I remember reading somewhere don't connect the solar under load but um, let's find out and see if I blow up. Okay, with the wire that I'm running, I'm going to put in a 25 amp fuse. Get out of the cubby. Okay, let's go see if the Serbo GX is talking to the solar charge controller. Which it is. New little screen on there. Negative five watts. Don't understand that. And now we'll just connect the solar. Just gonna check the polarity of these wires. Trusty multimeter. Okay, so this one here is negative, and that one there is positive. Please don't blow up, please don't blow up, please don't blow up. Hmm. Turns out for this particular solar charge controller, it was absolutely fine. There was no sparks or anything, so. <sighs> Not happy about this cable. That's obviously gonna have to get changed. I need like a two meter long one. All right, let's go see how much the solar is pulling in. Ooh, excited. Holy moly. 825 watts on my 800 watt solar panels. After getting the wind generator mast back from the welding shop, they did a great job by the way, I attached all the fittings and enlisted the help of my brother to affix it to the mast and then affix the mast back in place with the struts. It turns out that I did need all three struts with just two connected. The wind generator was just a little bit too wobbly. Got him. Okay, I'm quite initial. I finally heard back from Silent Wind in Portugal and they told me that I did need a 48 volt stator, which makes sense. So I spun the boat round and went up a rather precarious step ladder. Swapped the 12 volt stator out for the 48 volt version. The stator is basically the copper coil wires inside an electric motor, the non-moving parts, or this thing. Whilst the boat was spun around, I used this opportunity to also install a spare BHF. This one is a Seamaster Pro 1.8 meters. I then removed the old 1224 volt charge controller, replaced it with my new 48 volt charge controller, and hooked it all up and check this out. 